Well, I hadn't had a Bible study on this subject. And we're going to study tonight uh, what is a prophet. What is a prophet in the Bible? Prophet, I'm not talking about P-R-O-F-I-T. That means if you, you sell something, make money off of it. We're talking about the other kind of prophet, uh, P-R-O-P-H-T-Y-Z-L-M-N-O, uh, E-T, prophet, like that. So uh, tonight, um, let's start, let's start tonight with uh, Matthew 15. Take your Bible and turn to Matthew 15, and I'm going to go slow tonight, and we're going to study a little bit. Take your Bible, turn to Matthew 15. It's good for you to take your Bible in your lap and go back and forth and study it with it and flip pages and, and, and get familiar with your Bible and mark it and, and get it. So let's do a little study on the prophet, a real prophet, a real prophet. That's the title of this Bible study. Matthew 15, uh, uh, the Lord said one time in there, somewhere along in there, um, I was looking at another scripture over in 2 Peter. Uh, Good night. Where is this one in Matthew 15? What verse is it, y'all? Tell me. What is it? I'm sorry. Get the one in 2 Peter first. I'm sorry. 2 Peter. We'll come back to that one. 2 Peter over toward the end of your Bible there. Second Peter, and look at verse uh, chapter two, and we'll look at verse number one. Second Peter chapter two, and verse number one. But there were false prophets. So there's evidently real prophets and false prophets, right? There were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. My, 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 my. Think about that. Now, according to that chapter, he said, look, Peter was saying, that's one of the last apostles. He said, I'm warning you. He said, after we're dead and gone, there's gonna be false prophets come in and teach crazy stuff that you people don't don't need to hear. Now, I want you to turn to John 14, John chapter 14. And we'll look at two or three more here this evening. And then I'm gonna have you turn to some more scriptures as we move along. John 14, what is prophecy? What is the reason for prophecy? And I'll show you what the reason for prophecy is. Prophesying means basically... to to be in touch with God and foretell the future. Now, prophesying sometimes, they say, can mean foretelling and not always foretelling. Foretelling means tell something before it happens. And and only God can do that. Foretelling is proclaiming a truth. Now, we're going to talk about foretelling. John 14, and look at verse number 28. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you rejoice. He's talking about when he dies on the cross. And because I go unto the Father, ascending back to heaven, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, you might believe. Now right there, the Lord himself gave the definition and the reason for prophecy. He said, I'm telling you this before it happens. So when it does happen, you'll know that I was telling you right and that I am the Messiah. The whole purpose in Bible prophecy is to help us to know the Lord's right, the Bible's true, and and it's right. Uh, That's how you know the Bible's true. One of the ways you know the Bible's true is that it foretells the future, and the Koran don't do that. No other religious book does that. There's not another religion in the world that attempts to tell the future and nails it every single time. My, my, 
them Old Testament prophets, over and over and over, you look in the Bible and the Lord will say, and he sent and told them by the prophet so-and-so, and he sent and told them by the prophet so-and-so, and he sent a warning by the prophet Nahum, and he sent a warning by the prophet Isaiah, and Haggai, Malachi, and Zechariah, and Obadiah, and all them guys. It's the Lord's word by the prophet. The Lord's word by the prophet. We're gonna look at some of them tonight. Three things I wanna say about a real prophet. Number one, the reason I'm saying this, you got a lot of guys on TV today claiming to be prophets. I heard mean, somebody the other day, when somebody said something like that, oh, the prophet so-and-so's coming to town, to Morgan or something like that. And I said, well, if he is, I wanna see him because he's mighty old. Uh, uh, the, what does the Bible say about a real prophet? Number one, a real prophet always says what thus saith the Lord. Regardless of the consequences, regardless of the reaction of the audience, and regardless of how it sets with his crowd that he's preaching to. Look at 1 Kings chapter 22. You're gonna find one of the roughest old boys in the whole Bible. Here is a real prophet. 1 Kings chapter 22. Uh, chapter 22, and this old boy, his name is Micaiah. And Micaiah, he's that guy that uh, they, they come to the king one day and they said, uh, I want you to uh, tell me what's going on. And them old prophets couldn't tell him. And he said, well, ain't you got a prophet around here that'll tell me? And he said, I do. He said, there's one old boy left, but I hate him. <laughs> and you know why they hated him? Because what he preached, what he preached. Look at chapter 22 and verse number seven. And Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man, Micaiah the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. For he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. Lord, now, I'm gonna tell you something, people. That has always been and is still the world's reaction to a real prophet. You beware of these so-called prophets that the world like. People like Gene Dixon, people like Edgar Casey, people, these, these, these people that get on TV and they got these psychic powers and they're supposedly telling voice and the world loves it and gives them money. Listen, you know what they thought about a real prophet? They hated him. They hated him. You know why they hated him? Because he's always telling them something negative. Look what this old boy says in chapter 22 and verse 14. Look at verse 14. Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. The way you know a real prophet and the way you know a real preacher is he's gonna tell you what God said, regardless, amen? I wouldn't go to a church where the preacher wasn't gonna tell me what God said, I wouldn't. Why waste your time going to a social club where the preacher's too scared or too dumb to tell you what God said? You know what my you know why our little our little slogan, our little theme on our track, on our bulletin, on our radio program, on our website is Bible preaching? Because we want people to know when you walk in these doors right here, you're gonna get the Bible. You're gonna get the Bible. You may you may find a lot of fault with us. You may find a lot of fault with me. I've got them. You can find a lot of fault with these people around here. But I tell you one thing, when you come to this church, you're gonna get that book. You're gonna get it just like it says it and you're gonna get it without apology. We're gonna tell you what God said. Uh, somebody said, well, can't you just let up here, Brother Danny, and not say this and not say that? And not? Well, I don't think you ought to be a deliberate smart aleck or mean, but I'll tell you one thing. If telling you what this book says upsets you, you just gonna have to get upset. That's all I can say. Bless your little heart, I'm sorry. Uh, old, old Micaiah said, I'm gonna tell them what thus saith the Lord. And that's, that's his job. That's a real preacher's job, amen? A real preacher, a real prophet says what thus saith the Lord. I'm gonna tell you something tonight. I don't, I don't know the Bible by heart. I don't understand everything in here, but I believe every bit of it. 
I believe every bit of it. I wouldn't give you a dime for a preacher that says, well, we have the message of God, but there's mistakes here and mistakes there. If you don't have the word of God, shut up. You ain't got nothing to preach. If God calls you to preach the word, where's the word? If you ain't got the word, what are you gonna preach? Sit down, man. You're just giving your opinion. Everybody's got an opinion. Opinions are like armpits. Everybody got two and they both stink. Ain't that right? <laughs> That's right. I'm not going to give you my opinion. I'm going to give you what thus saith the Lord. Once in a while, I'll put my, I'll give my two cents worth, but you don't even have to take that. But you better take what thus saith the Lord. You sure better. You'll answer for that. Number two. Now listen to this. Listen to me. I've never done this before. The Lord gave me this today. You know how you know a real prophet? Number one, he'll preach what? Thus saith the Lord. Number two, he almost never prophesies anything positive. Almost never. Check me out. Check me out. Long term, yes. Short term, almost never. Check out any prophecy in the Bible and just about every single one of them is negative. Now, <laughs> the angel uh, of the Lord came to Lot and said, get out of here. God's going to burn this place to the ground. That's a negative message. The angel of the Lord didn't come to Sodom and say, well, we preach love and acceptance, Lot, and we should all be tolerant and everybody learn to love each other. Did he? You know what he said? God's going to burn this place down. You know why pe preachers don't say that now? Because you ain't going to get no big mega church and roll in a bunch of money saying God's going to burn down Sodom and Gomorrah. But that's what the Bible prophets did. Every Bible prophet preached negative. Three-fourths of the Bible is negative. Now, I'm going to say some stuff tonight that might rub some of y'all wrong, but it's because you've been hanging out with the wrong crowd or you've been watching the wrong TV programs or listening to the wrong news. Listen, when Noah was getting working on that boat and sawing and hammering and building, I mean, that took a while to build that boat. That was a whopper. Do you, the Bible said Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Do you think Noah got up there and said, now God loves all you people and and uh, we're building this boat, but uh, now if you don't believe like this, that's fine too. You'll, you, the, you won't drown. Uh, we're all going to be saved from the flood. But personally, do you think Noah did that? He didn't, did he? He said, if you don't get in this boat, you're going to drown. Oh, how divisive. Oh, how inexclusive. You're not being inclusive, Noah. You're causing division. But Noah, you know what? He said, if you ain't in this boat, you're going to drown. That's what the world can't stand, people. I'm telling you, we are living in a generation that can't stand that. Miss Pat, uh, she's with her, with her granddaughter tonight. She sent me a newspaper article, a link or whatever y'all call it, on my phone, and I looked at it. I don't know how many of y'all saw this, but it was in the Dallas, on, on the news, in the Dallas paper, the First Baptist Church of Dallas, Texas, put up some billboards around town that this coming Sunday morning, uh, uh, Ju is it this 24th? This Sunday morning, July 24th, Pastor Jeffries, you know Robert Jeffries, the pastor of the of First Baptist Church in Dallas. He's a fine man as far as I know. Uh, he's, he's right. I've, ever, I've heard him say on most stuff. I've heard him talk about he's, he's very pretty straight on most stuff. And they put up billboards around town that said America is a Christian nation and come to First Baptist Church this Sunday. That's what it said. You can look it up. America is a Christian nation. Come First Baptist Church Sunday morning and hear about it. And the town flipped out. Went crazy. And the mayor, listen to me, the mayor called and they called the company and made them take the billboards down. You know what they said? They said, that is not, it's, it's causing division, and that's not what we want. It's non-inclusive. And what he was saying was, 
our country was founded on Christian principles, and it was. It was. And the pastor said that. He said, you can't dispute it. I mean, we've got the facts to prove America was founded, for the most part, on Christian principles. doesn't say every, every forefather was a Christian, but it was definitely founded on Christian principles and on biblical principles. It was. And you mean to tell me a church can't put up a sign that says, come this Sunday, we're going to talk about America. And the mayor had it took down. And here's what he said. This is not the Christ I follow. The Christ I follow wouldn't say things that divide us. He's following on Christ. Bible said there's another Jesus. I talked to a guy the other day and uh, he's committing adultery and the guy told me, uh, I said, man, you know what? You know what, David, when David was in a relationship like that and got a woman pregnant, David paid for his sin in the death of his child. And the guy said, well, I don't believe in a vengeful God. I said, well, buddy, you believe in the wrong God then. Listen, I didn't write that. I didn't write that thing. The Bible said God struck that child and killed him. Direct result of David's sin. That's not the Christ I believe in. The people who talk about being inclusive and tolerant are the most intolerant people in the world. What they mean is, you got to tolerate us, but we ain't going to tolerate you. And I wish y'all could get a hold of this. It'll help you if you'll get a hold of what I'm saying. Listen, they got built, Jeremy Huggin, our, our deacon, he drives a truck and he sent me, I sent him that link and he sent me back pictures of billboards in Texas that would make you throw up. Three men hugging each other. One called Cheaters Club. Is that, that's, that's divisive for us. That's not inclusive for us. We're not including that. You make us feel unwanted. I'm going to tell you something tonight, people. A real prophet almost never says anything positive. They said, this is not the Christ I follow. Well, I tell you, but you follow the wrong Christ, brother. I'm telling you, you got the wrong Christ. Amen. Uh, uh, Jude prophesied one time, and he said, positive, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. Negative, to execute vengeance on all them that know. It's always there. It's always in there. You can't have a positive without a negative. This positive, uh, people say, but Jesus preached love and tolerance. I don't know what I, like I told. I don't know what guy, that guy I talked to the other day. What, what Bible you read, man? Have you ever read Matthew twenty-three? Does that sound like love and tolerance? You generation of vipers, you bunch of snakes. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said to the religious leaders of his day, "How divisive! How non-inclusive! You bunch of snakes." Somebody got the wrong Jesus. Amen. Uh, uh, Noah, they said Noah stood out there on the day, the day before the flood. Last message he preached before he went in. Come on, y'all, let's gather around and sing. Something good is going to happen to you. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. No. He's like that song. I think Drew sang that song here. When it's going to rain. It's going to be. Of the fire next time, something like that. Remember that song? It, it, it was water the first time. It's going to be the fire next time. That's negative. That's negative. You can't have heaven without hell. You can't have good without bad. And I'm going to tell you, if they can put up signs in Dallas, Texas, with three men hugging each other, you want to throw up now or wait till we get out of here? Hey, if they can put up but three men hugging each other with their shirts off and a, shirt, and, a, and a church puts up a sign and says, come and hear a sermon this morning on America's... I mean, it didn't say, we hate you, you're going to hell. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. Just America is a Christian nation. And they went crazy. And they went crazy. Look it up when you get out of here. I, I, I did read this evening that another, another company 
had heard about it and picked it up and given them 20 billboards instead of four, so praise God for that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Good for, good for them. Good for them. Uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, think about it, people. Uh, here's Jonah coming into in, in, in the Nineveh. Here comes Jonah in the Nineveh. People, God loves you, and I'm just here to tell you, I'm not here to judge you people. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not here to judge you. And uh, I, I just, I just don't, I don't believe, I have a ministry of tolerance and love. I mean, Jonah come in and said, 40 days, and God's gonna throw this place into hell. I didn't write it, people. A real prophet almost always has a negative message. I'm telling you, we're living in a time, we are living in a time when preachers, that's why these mega churches are growing by leaps and bounds. It's just everything's fine, everything's cool. That's what that guy told me the other day. He said, I, I believe in a, in a God that's not vengeful. And I said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Where, I mean, what, what Bible are you reading, man? Are you even reading the Bible? I don't major on the negative, but it's in there. And you've got to have it. You've got to have it. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Be sure your sin will find you out. I mean, you can't avoid it. The only way you can avoid that is just sway and hip hop and don't read the Bible, just tell stories and turn the lights down low and make it look like a nightclub. And brother, that ain't a bit more church than a nightclub in a lot of places. Amen. Let's look at oh, Elijah. Turn to 1 Kings 21. Back there where we was a minute ago. Let me show you a verse of scripture here. I'm, I'm about done. But you, you, in a minute, so stick with me here for a minute. 1 Kings chapter 21. Listen to this nice, positive message from this man of God. 1 Kings 21 verse 19. Listen to this positive message, people. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thus shalt thou speak unto him, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood. Hey, I'll give you $100 if you can find a Joel Osteen sermon where he preached on dogs licking people's blood up that sinned against God. I ain't trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to. I'm, I mean, think about that. And the dogs will lick your blood if you don't get. <laughs> no, it don't fit, does it? You wouldn't tolerate a preacher like that nowadays. That shows how backslid and wicked our generation's got. Some of you sitting right here tonight, if I said that, you'd say, Oh, Brother Danny, that's awful. I just read you the Bible. That's the Bible. See how far we've got? We've let TV and the world and music pull us so far away from God. It ain't no wonder God can't do nothing in most churches. It ain't no wonder we've had to fabricate conversions and fabricate uh, the spirit and false moving and, and a bunch of junk like that, brother. Uh, we need to get back to what, what God said in his word. He said, dog's gonna lick your blood, buddy. Here's what's gonna happen to you. God's gonna kill you and dogs will lick your blood off the pavement out there. You say, well, that is a little, yeah, I, I, I'd watch my mouth if I was you. I don't think it's too strong. I say, amen. God said it, amen. If my stomach's weak, he's right, I'm wrong. Look here at verse 23. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord. She was the leading woman, like the first lady, Hillary. I mean, almost like, verse 23. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord. You looking at it? First uh, Kings 21, 23, spake the Lord, the dog shall eat Jezebel. <laughs> get on, hey, get on TV and preach that. What if, what if they put up a sign out there in Dallas that said, the dogs are gonna eat you and some congresswoman? <laughs> you, Lord have mercy. You know who said that? The Lord did. And if you got a problem with that, you know who you got a problem with? The Lord. If that's too strong for you, buddy, take it up with him. You know what? I'm saying, amen, God, amen. I deserve for dogs to lick my blood, don't you? I deserve it. I deserve for the dogs to eat me. I hope it don't happen to me. 
I've almost had it happen a time or two on bus route. <laughs> Dogs got me. <laughs> but I'm telling you, people, that you, you see the, the drift in churches now that you'd never hear that preached in most churches. Ever. Ever. You never hear you don't hear that on TV. I don't know a TV preacher one. Listen, don't 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 be don't don't hate me. But listen, listen, I I keep up with, with what's going on out in the world. I, I watch some videos. I turn. I got several Christian stations on my TV, and I flip it around once in a while. I read that Jewish Jesus. I watch John Hagee. I watch uh, some of them, other guys, Perry Stone. All them. I'm not saying I agree with them. I'm saying I watch them to see what they're saying, and I listen to all kinds of preachers. Lord, we listen to Joyce Meyer and everybody else just to see what's being said. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. And I'm not talking about none of these people I just mentioned. The ones that claim to be prophets, you mark my word, every time they get on there, it's this. Something big is coming. Something good is coming. We're, getting on, we're on the verge of the greatest outpouring of the Spirit the world's ever seen. It's always something good's coming. Something good's coming. Something good's coming. And ain't one prophet in the Old Testament talk like that. Something bad's coming. We ain't going to have no worldwide revival, people. The Bible said the world's going to get worse and worse till Jesus comes. Now, can God send revival? Yes. Can you have revival? Yes. Can our church have revival? Yes. Could America repent? Yes, it could. But it ain't going to. You say, well, I just believe we ought to believe. Well, mark, mark my word. We'll see, okay? We'll see. Brother, our country has officially said, God, we don't care what you said. We're going to do what we want to do. You're out. They're out. He's out of our schools. He's out of our government. They don't want his name mentioned. They'll hate you if you love him. Brother, the lines are being drawn, and the battle is stage is being set. We are in a mess in this country. We're in a mess in this country. They never. Here's Nathan coming to David. David just committed adultery, had a man killed. The prophet Nathan. Now, David, I'm not here to judge you. He tells him a little story. Man had a sheep, had a whole bunch of sheep. Another man over here didn't have but one sheep, and he went over and stole his sheep. And David said, well, a man like that ought to die. And Nathan said, thou art the man. You don't get no big offerings and no mega church talking like that. Here's the way you do it. Well, we're all failures, and that's no different than somebody being prideful or jealous. That's what they say nowadays. That ain't what it says. I'll tell you another thing about God's prophets, and I'll be done. Turn to Deuteronomy 13. Deuteronomy 13. The next thing you want to know about God's prophets is they are never wrong. Not one time. Not one time is a Bible prophet. I ain't talking about these yahoos going around here trying to prophesy nowadays. They're always saying we're on the verge of the greatest revival the world's ever seen. Well, yeah, you keep telling people that. Keep telling people that. See where it gets you. The Bible prophets were never wrong. Not even once. Deuteronomy 13, if, verse 1, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Now stop right there. Sometimes God lets a false prophet come along and tell you a bunch of junk just to see if you love him and you'll stick with what's right. Now, Flip on over to Deuteronomy um, chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Get ready for the biggest move of God like we've ever seen. And I, I hear them say that all the time. Oh, Rodney, Howard Brown, all, all, and people like that. Get ready, the biggest move of the Spirit's coming. No, it ain't. I wish it would. And God can do anything. I'm not doubting the Lord. I'm doubting us. Deuteronomy 18, verse 22. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, Deuteronomy 18, 22, 
when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. He said, don't pay no attention to him. If a man prophesies something and it don't happen, ignore him. He's a nut. Because if, a, if thus saith the Lord, let me tell you something, buddy. If the Lord says something's going to happen, you can take it to the bank. It's coming. If the Lord says a great revival's coming, brother, it'll come. If the Lord says somebody's going to get raised from the dead, they'll get raised from the dead. If the Lord says uh, something's going to change, it's going to happen, brother. You can bank on it. But if it don't happen, you know that's a false prophet and he didn't know a bit more what he's talking about than a man in the moon. Amen? Now, there's three ways you know a real prophet. Number one, he always says what thus saith the Lord. Number two, he almost never says anything positive. And number three, he's never wrong. Because if God's speaking through him, God can't be wrong. If God's speaking through a prophet, it ain't wrong. If I get up here and I say, thus saith the Lord, it'll rain tomorrow at five o'clock. You will know tomorrow at five o'clock if I was speaking of the Lord or not. <laughs> and it might and it might not. Uh, again, and I don't do that. I don't say, thus saith the Lord. The only time I say, thus saith the Lord, is if I'm reading something that's in here. I know he said this. My pastor taught me a long time ago, and I, I worry about a lot of people. My pastor taught me a long time ago, he said, be real careful about saying, God told me this, and God told me that, and God, and like every day, the Lord just says, oh, you go over here and go to that store and go over here and buy that and, oh, go over here and eat this for supper. And it, it ain't that easy and simple, people. The Lord don't just stand up there and tell you every move to make and every decision to make. If the Lord really tells you something two or three times in your life, you're doing a lot better than most people. Yeah. Something big. You know what I'm talking about. God don't just talk to you all day long. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. The Spirit leads you. The Spirit convicts you. I All day long, I feel like maybe the Lord wants me to do this. One, but my pastor told me that. He said, always say, I feel like the best of my knowledge that the Lord would have me to do this or that. I could be wrong. Don't, don't get so much confidence in your flesh that God told me this and, and God told me that and then God told me the other thing and then God told me the other thing. You, you don't just throw it around that loose. It, it's not that, not that simple, and it's not that cut and dry, okay? All right, we've got a couple of minutes here uh, before we go. Uh, anybody got a question? 